everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, Barrett, Monica, and Brent. And today we're going to play Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Now, if you haven't checked it out already, make sure to check out the setup video if you'd like to see the story and how this scenario was set up. Also, we're doing a free giveaway on both channels for a foreteller giveaway for the app that reads out the uh, story to you so you can have some flavor and all of that. It's really great. You can hear a little bit of it actually in the setup video if you want to check that out. With that, let's jump in. So I'm thinking you guys this round, I'm going to go and try and hit this guy over here and then start moving myself towards that stone golem because I want to maybe tank him for you guys a little bit and slowly pick at him because I'm not very strong, but I can take some hits. Well, I might take that stolen golem out before you even get there. I'm going to use my favorite ability on him. All right, Boom Boom's probably going to try to go over this guy. Since you guys are all going this way, he's going to be the one-man show going that way. Oh, I love it. He's going to be all on his own, getting attacked by all the zealots. That's wonderful. I'll actually be going your way, too. Oh, well, then look at that. I'm not going to be a one-man show. <laughs> okay, Alora's going to help you out. I love it. So what we've done is we've all chosen two cards. You're only going to see one here. This is the card that we're choosing to be our initiative card. And then we have the Stone Golem and the Zealot's uh, uh, action cards as well, action deck. And we'll reveal these and then put them in order based upon the numbers that are on the cards. And then we will activate in what we call initiative order. So looking here, we look at these initiative numbers and we determine the order going from lowest to highest. So we've got Boom Boom going first, followed by all the Zealots. We'll activate all the Zealots together. Then we'll do uh, the Red Hood. Then we'll do Allura, then we'll do Xander, and then now follow that up with the Stone Golem. Boom Boom's going first with a 20 initiative. And the first thing we do is use knockout support by being able to move two squares. And that's going to put us next to the rock and allowing us to destroy one adjacent obstacle. And if I do, I get to gain an experience points and perform strength and self, which allows me to draw two cards and take the best one for our attack. And what's our attack? Oh, we're going to get him with crushing weight. I'm going to use attack three and I'm going to add two to my attack and gain an XP if the target is adjacent to a wall. And check it out, that zealot is a adjacent to a wall. So let's see what we can do. Come on, boom, boom. I got a zero and I also got a null. Well, guess which one we're going to take? You got it, the zero. So I'm going to go ahead and do five damage to that zealot. It's not quite enough to take him out, but it did some damage. Next to go will be the zealots. Now, how you activate the enemies, you first look at all of the elites and you'll activate the elites first. And then since we have more than one elite zealot, what we need to do is look at the numbers on the zealots themselves and we activate them from lowest to highest. So our lowest one is right over here, and we have move plus zero. So we can see here that the movement is two for the elites. So they're going to move two, and then they have an attack minus one at a range two. And so if he was attacking, let's say, he would attack at a three minus one, which is two, and then he try and heal himself. And then we're gonna put up the knight. So no matter what, we're gonna have an attack. Barrett, would you pop that knight up to the top? We're gonna move that all the way to strong, and then somebody can use that on a future turn. The first thing you want to do for your monsters when you activate them is you need to find your focus. The focus will always be the enemy that is closest to them. Right now, you can see that all of us are over here. I'm not going to try and count out who's the closest because all he's going to be able to do is move two spaces this way, trying to get closer to us. He is not within range two of any of us, so he will not attack. Now let's move to the next one, which I believe will be this number four. Unfortunately, Boom Boom is definitely the closest. It's going to go ahead and take two steps forward. Range two, oh yes, not within range two, thank goodness. So Boom Boom is safe. Finally, we'll do number six. Now number six just got a hammering by Boom Boom. Kind of pissed at Boom Boom. <laughs> so he's got a movement of two. He can move into that difficult terrain. So he'll take one step back right here. That cost him his two movement. But now he's going to be able to attack Boom Boom. Now the reason we moved him away from Boom Boom is because whenever you do a range attack, if you are adjacent to the enemy that you're attacking, you're actually disadvantaged. Enemies don't want to be disadvantaged. I mean, nobody wants to be disadvantaged. So they will try and make themselves not disadvantaged before they attack if possible. Now what's going to happen is he's going to attack Boom Boom at two points of damage. Oh, and it's going to wound Boom Boom. Uh, so we'll see two. Oh yes, minus one. So only one point of damage. But unfortunately, Boom Boom is going to take a wound. The next action the Zealot's going to do is the Heal X to Self. X is the damage suffered by the target of the attack. So that's only one. So he'll, he'll heal one point of damage. That means he has how much? Four? Mm -hmm. It's not bad. Four damage. We can still kill him. He's already at half health. So let's take him on. We've now completed uh, activating the Elite Zealots. Now we go to the Normal Zealots. 
There are two of them. We'll do number two first. That's the one that unfortunately is going to be able to get to me. He's going to move two spaces right into that difficult terrain so that he is within range two, and he's going to attack me. He's attacking for two, minus one, so only one, and then we'll flip this, uh, plus one, for two points of damage. So I'll soak that. I'll go down to eight. Our final zealot is number five. He's simply going to take two steps forward, hoping to get to boom boom, but not within range. That's all he's going to do. This will end the activation of the zealots. Let's move to Red Hood. For Red Hood's turn, first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our Flaming Sickle. We're going to attack for three to range two and pull that zealot right next to us. And we're also going to put up the fire. And we're going to do a total of three plus plus plus. Ah, dang, no, it's a minus. Three minus one. So we only did two points of damage. He only has six health, so he'll still have four health left. After this attack, we'll go ahead and pull him one, pull him right up next to me. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move three. But you know what? Now, here's the thing. Currently, the stone golem would not be able to target me. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move three around the, uh, the zealot and try and get myself closer to him, but not be within range three. Also, if I do happen to have any attacks that are attacking me for the rest of the round, all attacks will gain disadvantage, which is great. And you can see, unfortunately, I wasn't able to use this when I was attacked by the Zealot the first time because I had not activated. If I had gone first, I would have gotten that uh, benefit, but unfortunately, the Zealots went faster, so I didn't gain the benefit of this against the Zealot. For Alora's first turn, we're going to play this card here, Master Influence. And what it does is, because the Void Warden has a number of other cards that allow allies and enemies to attack each other, this card, every time that I do that, the first time each turn will make that an advantaged attack. And this will stay out the uh, rest of the scenario until I decide to discard it. And then for my other action, I'm going to move myself two. And then I also can move one ally within range three, two spaces. And so I'm going to use that to move Xander. Thank you, Alara. For Xander's first turn, he's going to play the favorite and a double throw. We're going to start by moving using the double throw. I'm actually going to use this bottom basic action and just use it as a move two, which allows me to move into the difficult terrain next to the golem. I'm doing this for, um, the main reason I'm doing this actually is because he has a ranged attack this turn and so he will be disadvantaged since I am next to him. I also wanted to be next to him in order to capitalize on the favorite's ability, which I will use next turn. So the way the hatchet's ability works is he plays with favorites. This card here sets up its ability and it will stay out for the entire round. I take a token and I put it onto this card and when I use a ranged attack, I may add plus three attack to that attack on, on whatever character I decide to attack and then this token stays with that character. And then a couple of my other cards will then allow me to boost my attack against um, the character that has the token on it. When the character with the token is defeated, it gets dropped on its hex, and then I can pick it back up and put it back onto this card and utilize that again on a new enemy um, throughout the course of the, of the uh, scenario. So that's actually all that Hatchet or Xander is going to do this turn, setting him up, him up for the next couple turns. Last to go for this round will be the Stone Golems. So the first one to activate will actually be this one right over here. Guess what? There's no movement on the Sacrificial Hurl that they're doing, so he won't move. And no one is within range 3, so we don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately though, that means he does not suffer 2 damage. Uh, the one though that's right next to Hatchet, or Xander, will attack Xander, but because Monica, or Xander, put herself in the perfect position, uh, he will be disadvantaged for this. So that means, oh, it's either a plus two or a minus one. So that means she got hit for three total damage because it was a three plus one, which is four, minus one, which is back to three. So she'll take three damage and then the golem itself will take two damage, which is absolutely great. Xander is also going to use one of her items and that is the heater shield. When damaged by an attack, gain shield one for the attack. This allows her to only take two points of damage, but that will exhaust the heater shield until she does a long rest. At the end of the round, any of the enemies that have one of these symbols on them, or Boom Boom, for an example, that had flipped their Miss card, will now need to shuffle either their uh, modifier deck, or for the Zealots, they're going to reshuffle their enemy deck. One thing we forgot to do at the end of the round is all the elements that are at Strong go to Wayne. 
If there were any at waning, they'd go to inert, so people could not use those elements. Let's go ahead. We've decided what we're going to do for the next round. Let's flip them and see the initiatives. Looking here, it looks like Red Hood is first, followed by Boom Boom, followed by those blasted zealots, followed by Allura, followed by Xander, and then finally those stone golems bringing up the rear. For Red Hood's turn, first thing we're going to do is we're going to activate our chain armor because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get hammered this round, and I want that shield. So during your turn, I gain shield one for the rest of the round. That's also the reason why I made sure I went at a really high initiative at six, or low, whichever way you want to say it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play my attack two here down at the bottom, which is pretty fun because normally your attacks are on the top of your card, but I do have one, it's called my twirling stabs, on the bottom. Normally it's an attack two, but because the fire is there, I'm going to use that fire element, and that's going to give me a plus one, or not a plus one, it's going to wound the enemy that's right next to me. So I'm going to wound that zealot, attacking for two, and we'll flip this, oh, one for a total of three damage. That's a total of five. That means when they activate, they're going to kill themselves because they only have six health. This also is going to provide me with some XP, which is great. Then I'm going to use my Flame Shroud. I love the name, you guys. It's exactly what I see this as being. The next five times an enemy enters a hex adjacent to you, that enemy just suffers two damage. And I put up the fire. So I put the fire back up. That way somebody else can potentially use that. And so with that, what I do is I'll place my token here. And how these cards work is this will stay out uh, for as long for the rest of the game. You can see this, that means it's out for the rest of the, the scenario. Each time this happens, I'll move this over and deal two points of damage. And by the way, that suffers, that goes through all shields. When I move past this box that has a one XP, I'll gain an XP when that happens, which is great. So I get to do that five times, two of the times I'll gain XP for, uh, for using my Flame Shroud. Pretty sweet. Boom Boom's coming up next with a 19 initiative. Now, sadly, I've got my wound token still, so I am going to suffer one damage at the beginning of my turn. But that's okay, because check it out. We're doing the one-two punch and explosive blitz. Now, we're not going to use any of this because I'd lose the card. I don't want to do that. We're just going to move two, which is actually going to move me up one space. I'm going after that same guy I was going after last time. He really wants to take him out. And we're going to do it with a one-two punch. We're going to go ahead and hit him once for two, and then once again for one. Now, if I was adjacent to another character, I could use these attacks on two different characters characters, but we're not. We're just going to totally wreck this guy. I'm going to hit him for two and one and use my eagle eye goggles, which means during your attack, I gain advantage for the entire attack action, which means I get to draw two cards and take the better one. Of course, it's going to exhaust it, just like some of the other items you've seen. The first attack we're going to do is two plus zero. Oh, something better. Oh, we only got zero. You know, that's fine. It's better than nothing. I'm going to do two damage to him with that attack. Now, the second one is going to do one Oh, negative one, that's no good, and it's upside down, but that's okay, the plus one is two, but it gets through! So we're gonna do four damage to that guy, which is enough, I think, to take out the Zealot. Let's check it out. Doom. And with that sound effect, he is done. So now that the attack is done, we're gonna place a loot token, and I'm still gonna gain one experience points, even though I didn't push or muddle these characters, because I did still attack the same target twice. And that's gonna bring me up to three XP, I'm rocking it! Moving to the Zealot's turn, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, Elite of the Zealots. We have our number one here. He's going to move three, two plus the one here. Fortunately, he doesn't get next to anybody. I thought he was going to get next to me, but that's actually good. He doesn't. He would attack. Can't do it. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's go ahead and activate that second Elite Zealot. Now this is where things get interesting. So technically, Boom Boom, by just looking at range, is only one space away from that Zealot. But there's a trap there that the Zealot would have to stand on in order to attack Boom Boom. And they're not that stupid. They're not going to do that. So instead what he's going to do is he's going to move adjacent to both Boom Boom and the Red Hood. Now because he's adjacent to both of us, to determine who he's going to focus his attack on, we look at initiative order. I was first, so he's going to attack the Red Hood. So he's attacking me as an elite for three minus one, and we'll flip this one, another minus one. So three minus one minus one is only one point of damage, and then I have one shield. So I don't take any damage. Also, he moves adjacent to me. Because he moved adjacent to me, I will use my Flame Shroud. This card means that Zealot will take two points of damage. I'll move this up one, and I am a happy camper. Although that Elite Zealot did not do any damage to me, unfortunately, they still will wound me. So I will take a wound token, and that means at the beginning of each of my activations going forward, I'll take one point of damage. We'll now move to the normal Zealots. Fortunately for us, the number two way over there, he will activate. He has four, five points of damage. He'll take his six because of that wound, and he's toast. He's uh. He is gone, gone, gone. So we'll drop a, uh, a loot token there that we can pick up. 
Next, we'll activate the other normal zealot. He will unfortunately move three. One, two, and three, and get himself right next to me again. He will attack me for a total of two minus one, which is only one, plus one, which is two, but then I have my shield for once, so I'll take one point of damage. That puts me down to seven health. Lucky for me, that zealot walked right into my flame shroud. So I will gain one XP, that will be my second XP, and he will suffer two points of damage. For Alora's next turn, we're gonna use the bottom half of Grasp of Doom to move here. And because the knight is up, we're gonna put the knight down, which will allow me to move five. I'm only gonna actually need four of those to get right over next to Xander. And for the second half of Alora's action, we're gonna use Gift of the Void. It allows me to put a poison on an enemy within range three. So I'm gonna use that for the stone golem here. Then one adjacent ally may perform an attack three at a range of four, targeting the target of the poison. If they do, they're gonna suffer two damage. So Xander is going to do this. So Xander is going to choose to attack the stone golem, although he is right next to it and it's a range attack, so he will be disadvantaged. But this allows Xander to use its favorite ability, which says on the ranged attack that I may add plus three attack and place this favorite token on that character. And now because Xander is doing an attack on my turn, my master influence card that I played last turn will come into effect here. So she will gain advantage, which will cancel out her disadvantage. So this will just be a normal attack. The attack was for three and the favorite makes it plus three. So it's an attack for six. And then we're also going to use the second part of master influence, which says if we can use one of the elements and exhaust it, then we will get an extra plus one. So let's exhaust the fire there. And Xander will now be doing an attack for seven. Using Xander's attack modifier deck, we are currently attacking for seven plus one. So that's an attack of eight. It would be minus one for the shield, but he's poisoned. So he's going to be attacked for eight. Take eight points of damage, plus he already has two on him. That's a total of 10, and we just took that stone golem out. As the last part of Alora's turn, we're going to put the knight up, and then Xander will need to suffer two damage as the last bit of the card there because he did make the attack. Since the stone, stone golem is no longer on the board, I am going to change what I was going to do. I'm still going to use this retrieval, which I was planning on using on the stone golem because it would have allowed me to return my token to my card. Since the stone golem was taken out before returning it, I have to go loot that token. But I'm going to apply this attack two to the summoning pillar. So I'm attacking for two plus zero. So it took two points of damage. Then I'm going to use the bottom action over here, which is another attack two. So again, attack for two on the summoning pillar plus zero. So another two points of damage. It's currently at four. It needs one more point of damage before it is gone. And then I'm going to use the move two to move over collect that coin, and return my favorite token to my coin, to my card. To end this round, we'll activate our stone golems. You can see here it's just a move zero, attack zero. He only moves, well that's a, yeah, normal, one. That's it. And he can't attack, no one's there. That'll end the round. We'll have the knight move down to waning, and that'll end this round. Let's jump to the next one. We've now all determined our cards. Let's flip them, and we better see this demolition going before the red hood. Well, this has been shooken up since the last time. We're going to have Alora first, followed by Xander. Those two just like to hang out. Then we have the Zealot, we have Boom Boom, then we have the Red Hood, and finally the Stone Golem. For Alora's next turn, we're going to use the bottom half of Suggestion, which allows us to move three onto that rubble pile there. And then, because we can use the Knight, we get to curse one enemy within range three. A curse means that we're going to add this miss to the attack modifier deck for the monsters. Then we're going to use the top half of Close to the Abyss, which allows us to heal two targets within range two for two damage. And any allies who remove poison would gain bless. Now in this case we don't have any of those, but Red Hood and Boom Boom are both wounded, and the way that healing works with wounds is you heal right through the wound. So you move you lose the status and then you also heal the full healing amount. For Boom Boom, that brings him up to eight health, and for Red Hood, that brings him up to nine. 
On Xander's turn, he's going to start using center mass by moving three. And then he is going to push two, targeting one adjacent enemy. So I'm going to push that elite zealot right into the trap. That trap does three points of damage to the elite zealot. Then I'm going to use stopping power and attack for three at a range two. But I got my favorite token back, so I'm going to apply that to this elite zealot here and attack him for six instead of just three. So I'm attacking for six plus a zero. So I did six points of damage to the elite zealot. He already has two points of damage on him, taking it to a total of eight, which takes him out. I drop a loot token where he was. And my favorite token is there as well. Next, we're gonna activate the zealots. This isn't gonna be fun. Sorry, boom, boom. First thing we need to do is we're gonna look to see we only have one elite. We're gonna activate that elite. We have a move, at their movement is two plus zero. So they're gonna take a step back. And the reason for doing that is because the attack will be ranged this time. If the attack was melee, he would have stayed right where he was. So he's gonna have the focus on boom, boom. He's gonna take one step away so he's not disadvantaged. He's gonna attack for three minus one, which is two. And then we'll flip this. Oh, minus two, boom, boom is happy. That is a zero attack. Unfortunately though, irrespective of if you hit or not, any of the conditions will still apply, so Boom Boom will still take a wound. We also should put up the Knight. Finally, he would try and heal self equal to the amount of damage that he, t that he did to Boom Boom. None, so he's not going to heal at all. Then we're going to move to the Normal Zealot. The Normal Zealot will look to see who he's going to focus with. He is adjacent to both me and Xander. Unfortunately, this time Xander went before the Red Hood. I really would prefer him to attack me, but no. So he's going to take one step back. Uh, he's going to take one step back and then attack Hatchet. He is only attacking for two minus one, so it's only one point of damage. We'll go ahead and flip, and it's a plus zero. So uh, Hatchet will take one point of damage, which puts her down to three health, you guys. Yeah, we need to heal her up a little bit. And since this Zealot did deal one point of damage, he'll also heal one point of damage because of this card. And don't forget this Drain Life card, because it has this symbol. At the end of the round, we're going to shuffle their uh, activation deck, and we'll have new cards to start next round. Boom Boom is going to be going next. Now, of course, Boom Boom is wounded. We got that off, but sadly, we got it back again. So we're going to have to take one damage. It's going to bring you down to seven health, but that's okay. We've got some awesome cards. We're going to go ahead and explode, which means I could move up to four squares. And if I had fire, I could move two more. But before we do that, check it out. We're going to drop the big one. That's right. Dr. Strange Love is driving in on his atom bomb. We're going to blow up all these zealots. So we're going to go ahead and target a square that's within range two. And so I'm going to target the elite zealot that is out there, and I'm going to be able to attack all the people that are inside this range, which I'm going to be able to get that other zealot as well. Now, I'm only doing three damage. I know only. Isn't that amazing? All right, we're going to go ahead and flip our first attack deck modifier, and we're going to see how much we do to the elite zealot. Hopefully a lot. Oh, well, zero. Okay, well, that's still some. We did three to the elite zealot. Let's see how we do to the regular zealot. Another zero. Okay, that's two. So that's how much damage we did to both of them. We're going to go ahead and place those tokens on. After doing three damage to both of those enemies, look at this. I get to put up two elements, both fire and earth get to go up, which means anybody can now use those. Now, sadly, look at this. I'm going to lose this card. You can only drop one atom bomb a game, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and ditch this card. It's going to go into our loss pile. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move four. I don't get to use the fire because I actually put it on the board right now. We're going to get on the other side, and I think I'm going to start trying to get to that other summoning stone. Red Hood here is going to start off by using his Shield Spikes. Now, instead of doing the Heal 2, because that's actually what I was thinking of doing, but we had Allura, who was so nice and healed me up. Thank you, Allura. I'm going to instead use this just as a simple move 2. I'm going to move myself right in range to be able to hit two different Zealots. So I'm going to have to use the fire for the top of this Shield of the Desert. But, but because of that, I'm doing an attack of three, and I can hit two different areas. Now, this gray uh, hex here is telling me that that's where I have to stand, and then I can hit two enemies that are adjacent to me. I've got two enemies there. I've got one elite and one normal. I'm also going to go ahead and use my power potion. Now, I can only use this once per scenario. I'm going to give myself a plus one to my attack. So right now, I'm hitting for three plus one, which is four. So I'm doing four points of damage. Let's do the elite first. Four plus zero, that would be four plus the six that's already on him. Totally, totally toast. Our second attack will be against that normal enemy. I just need to be able to do two points of damage to take him out. Oh, a plus one. Boom. Done. It's looking like, to me, a loot action might be kind of nice in that area right now. 
To end the round, we're going to activate our stone golems here. They are simply going to have a move minus one. That normal won't even move. Attack plus one, no one's in range. That's all he's going to do. Uh, we then need to put down our elements and down to waning, and let's start that next round. And don't forget, we have to shuffle this activation uh, deck for the stone golems. We've picked out our cards for this round. Now you're going to notice we don't have the enemy deck for the zealots, and that's because we've eliminated all of them on the board. So right now, we'll only be drawing one enemy card for the stone golem, and then our four cards for, act, uh, for our initiative. It looks like for this round, it'll be the Red Hood, followed by Alora, followed by the stone golem, followed by Xander, and then a boom boom bringing up the rear. First thing we're going to do is we're going to do our blinding sickle. Now instead of attacking, what we're going to do is we're going to do this loot one. It says all adjacent enemies. I don't have any adjacent enemies, so we can't do the top part, but we're going to do a loot one, and we're going to push the sun up. So that means all the loot tokens that are on the board within one space away from you, you get to pick up, which is great. So that gives me a bunch of money ready to go to the, to the store and buy some awesome equipment for my team. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my shocking advance here. Now I'm gonna do an attack three. I can't immobilize the pillar, I wish I could, but I'll do an attack three, and then I can't do the shield here and gain XP because I, although I push the sun up, I can't generate an element and use it within the same turn. Now, what's nice, though, is someone else could use the sun if they wanted, but I don't think anybody else uses the sun. So I'm attacking for three, plus one is four. Oh, so close. I almost destroyed that pillar. So that pillar only has one health remaining. For Alora's turn, we're going to start with the bottom half of Signs of the Void, but we're actually just going to use it for the default move two. And so I'm just going to move one space in this way to get me within range to use the top half of Wicked Scratch, which allows one ally within range two to perform an attack three. It moves the knight up, and it gives me one XP. And with that, I'm gonna allow Red Hood to attack that pillar again. So it's an attack three with advantage because of the card that I played that allows my first time I let an ally or an enemy attack each round to be advantaged. And we're gonna use the earth element to give that attack plus one. So it will actually be an attack four with advantage. This attack will be using Red Hood's attack modifier deck and we'll flip two cards here. So we have a minus one and a critical. So that will mean Red Hood is gonna do eight damage to the summoning stone, taking it out. And the last thing I'm gonna do on my turn is use the stamina potion which will allow me to return one of my discarded cards to my hand. And that does mean I'm not able to return either of these two cards. I have to use something that was already in my discard pile before this turn started. And that goes away for the rest of the scenario. Moving to the Stone Golem's turn, we're gonna do a move plus one. So normal movement is one, plus the one is two. It's gonna move two spaces forward. He has an attack at a range of three. Still, no one was, is within range three, so we're good to go. He's not going to pull anyone. That'll end his activation. On Xander's turn, he's going to attack the Summoning Stone with this Disorienting Barrage, but he's going to use the default instead of this special attack. So I'm attacking the Summoning Stone for two. I need one point of damage. Okay, good. So that stone, Summoning Stone is now destroyed. What this means, though, is we have to read our special rules. The tremors have subsided. You feel you've finally gotten a handle on things, but then more men with robes rush from the deeper tunnels of this wretched place to aid the others. Ah, oh, blast. They're thinking we were almost done. Spawn one normal and one elite zealot at B. That's over here. And then it says, additionally, we're going to spawn one normal and one elite zealot at C for four characters. For the rest of Xander's turn, he is just going to move three and push up the wind. And he's going to go collect his favorite token. Because we have revealed new enemies on the board, what we need to do is reveal their behavior card. So we're going to reveal that. They're going to be at a 77. What that means is they're going to activate before uh, Boom Boom does, unfortunately. So let's activate them now. First thing is we look at our elites. They're going to move minus one. Each of them will only move one space. Uh, this one. Was, uh, would try and move now it's not going to move backwards to try and go forwards uh it's if it if its movement doesn't get it any closer to its target it's not going to move so this one won't move then we'll go to the normal ones the normals will also move only one space we'll start with this one he'll move here and this one also won't move because he has no place that he can go to get closer to us so he'll simply stay there their attacks are all melee we're certainly out of melee range 
So that's all we need to do for them. Boom Boom is going to be bringing up the rear, and sadly, still has that wound token, so we're going to have to take one damage, bringing us down to six. Now, these are the two cards I picked, and I didn't know anything was coming out, so sadly, I decided to let Boom Boom just kind of rest for a turn, kind of get back some actions, because you know what? It's been going really, really great for a person. We're going to go ahead and put a token here, and I'm going to go ahead and use our wind-up. So we're winding up those one-two punches. On your next two attacks, add plus two to my attack, so I'm going to be able to do that twice. But that's not happening now because, sadly, I'm only able to move three, and I can destroy one obstacle within range three. I don't want to destroy any obstacles. I got better cards for that. We are going to take one step back because after this, I only have one card left, and I'll probably want to use that to rest. At the end of the round, we'll simply move our elements down to waning, and we'll start our next round. For this round, both Boom Boom and Red Hood need a break. We're taking long rests. What that means is we don't draw or play two cards out on the board. What we instead do is play no cards this round, and at an initiative a 99, so right at the end of the round, we'll heal 2 HP, then we have to lose one card in our discard pile and put the rest of those cards back into our hand. We'll also be able to refresh any of our items that have been exhausted, not the one-time used ones, but any of the ones like my chainmail, for example. I'll be able to ready that and then use it again in a future round. Looking at our initiative, we have Xander first, then we have Allura, then we have the Stone Golems, and followed by those Blasted Zealots. And then it'll be both Baird and I doing our long rest. Xander's going to start by moving three. Now this card also says I would get to add to move two if I had already killed an enemy, but I have not. So we're just going to move the three, and then I'm going to do an attack two at range four. And I'm going to put my favorite token on the enemy that I attack again. So I am going to target the non-elite zealot and put my favorite token on him. So I'm currently attacking for two, plus three is five, and oh, I just took him out. I got my my critical hit, so I did 10 points of damage on that guy. My favorite token will stay where the Zealot was. For Allura's first half of her turn, we're going to use the bottom half of this Freeze the Soul here, just for the default move of two. And then we're going to use the top half of Black Boon to heal Xander for five, but also add poison so that when Xander takes attacks in the future, they will be more damaging. And then we're also going to move the Knight up. Our stone golems are next. All this one is going to do is move two spaces closer to us. <laughs> this one has slowly plotted from here all the way over there. <laughs> yeah, they're slow. Next to go are the zealots, and no one is within range three. They're not going to move, so they aren't going to do anything. They're going to stare menacingly at us. Okay. Finally, for our long rest, Boom Boom will take one point of damage going down to five because of the wound, but then he'll heal for two because of the long rest. That will get rid of the wound, and he'll go up to seven health. He will also have his eagle eye goggles ready to go. I'm going to lose my shield spikes, which ugh, it heals. I'm sad about it. But I have my chain armor that will be ready, and I'm ready to go. I'll also go up to full health at 10. At the end of the round, we will also move our elements down, so we now only have knight at waning. For this round, both Alora and Xander are going to take a little bit of a break and rest. So it's just going to be boom boom and the red, the red hood. Red Hood will start us off, followed by the Zealots, then it's Boom Boom, then the Stone Columns, then we've got Xander, followed by Allura. Red Hood's going to start off by doing a move three and putting the sun up. We're going to go ahead and loot that token at the end of our turn. Then what we're going to do is do an attack for three at a range two. You see that Stone Golem? Let's hit him. So we're going to put up the fire for this attack. We're attacking for three and we'll flip this plus one, which is four. Heck yeah. He has one shield, so he'll take three points of damage. And I'm going to pull him one towards me. And now, because he's next to me, I will use my Flame Shroud, and he will suffer two more points of damage. That will put him at five damage already, half health. The Zealots are next. What's great, they still don't move. They have an attack range of two. No one's within range two, so that's all they're going to do. We'll move now to Boom Boom. Boom Boom's next, and you may see I have three cards out here. No, I'm not actually using all three, but I want to remember we have this card because I'm going to be doing some awesome attacks again with the one-two punch. So we're going to first off start with Explode, though. I'm going to move four, and I'm going to consume that fire to give myself an extra move moving six. So I'm going to move around the Stone Golem. Give me close to those Zealots because we've noticed they don't move very much. And the next thing I'm going to do, yeah, you got it. One-two punch, and I'm going to use those Eagle Eye Goggles again just because they're amazing. And I'm going to be able to draw two cards, and let's see what happens. Now, every one of these attacks is going to give me plus two, and I'm actually making two attacks just from one card. So our first attack is going to do negative two. I don't like that one. Well, negative one isn't great either. But we're going to do one, two, 
three, four, minus one, so we did three. He's got a shield, that's two. So we've done two damage the first attack. Our second one, after moving that token, is going to be plus one. Come on, something good. Oh, another negative one. So we only did two more damage. He's going to subtract. Oh, no, I didn't. Look, one, two, three, minus one is two. So he's going to take one more damage. Bringing him down to just one health. He's down. He's taken nine damage. We're so close, but we didn't quite get him. But I am going to go ahead and move this off and gain that last experience. And this card then is going to be lost to me. Which means I have five experience. We're raking in the XP. Now the one thing I forgot is because my one-two punch, I hit the same target, allowing me to push him two squares away from me, muddling him, and I get that also precious experience. That's even my second experience in this turn. And we're going to move him two spaces away from me. Which then, of course, brings me up to six for experience. We'll then go and activate that Stone Golem. Now, the nice thing is, we're at, he's at a move minus one, and you can see here his movement is only one. So that means he's not going to move. Thank you, Boom Boom, for pushing him, because he would be doing an attack plus one. He'd be attacking for four damage. No, no one's within range. But he does have that Muddle Token. We'll now remove the Muddle Token, because it's the end of his activation. Because Xander and Allura are resting, each of them will lose one card from their discard pile. For Xander, well, uh, yeah, for Xander, we get to refresh the heat shield, and Xander was poisoned, but with that rest, you heal 2 HP. With poison, what happens is you negate all the HP that you would heal with a heal uh, action, but then you get to remove the poison. So with that heal, she'll remove the poison. Fortunately for Xander, Xander was at full health anyways, so getting rid of the poison is just perfect. This will then end the round. We'll go ahead and move the elements down, and we're set for the next round. And unfortunately, after this round, we had a bit of a video corruption. Our video camera that was recording the cards that we were playing no longer saved the video. So after we got to the second to last round, <laughs> we were just about ready to defeat the final enemies. We stopped the video, went to try and export it. There was nothing there. <laughs> so what I have here is the other video camera, the one that's shooting overhead. And this is just showing you a little bit of what we did for those last few rounds. I would wish I could tell you exactly what we were doing, but you know, <laughs> I decided the best way to show you guys what's happening, put it in 1000 times speed. You guys can see a little bit and just know that at the end of the scenario, we did win the game. Uh, everyone except for Allura was able to complete their battle objective. Allura had a very challenging battle objective, especially considering the fact that uh, he hardly ever attacked the entire game. And he was trying to attack an enemy after it had been damaged by another character during that same turn. <laughs> so regardless, it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. What we'll do is we'll now move to the conclusion. You sit on the cracked stone floor and rest for just a second, eyeing the dark corridors leading off from this room, praying to the oak that more enemies don't appear from the shadows. Luckily, the exits remain silent, but that doesn't help with your ever-increasing sense of foreboding. Something is down in the depths of this place. So far, you've been blindly flailing around trying to get to the bottom of this madness, and whatever it is, whatever answers you could hope to find, are waiting for you down the next tunnel. It's just a matter of taking the first step. You can see here our reward is we gain a mana potion, and I'm actually going to take that as the red hood. We have our new location, a deeper understanding. Here we have all of our character sheets. You can see the Red Hood and Xander each got 23 experience, and uh, Boom Boom and Alora got 24. After the scenario, we did have a city event. I don't want to spoil that, so just know that at the end of it, we're going to have to start the next scenario muddled. So there you have it. That was scenario four. I have to say, I really enjoyed this. I felt just like I was playing Gloomhaven. The thing that I'm loving about Jaws of the Lion is it's an all a congruent story. I really miss that with Gloomhaven. I want it to be one big epic campaign, and instead it's all these side stories that don't combine. This one is one story throughout, and I love that. And I also absolutely love the storybooks. I will buy storybooks in a heartbeat. I'm hoping, hoping he'll do that for Frosthaven, and even maybe get me them for Gloomhaven. I would buy all of them in a heartbeat. <laughs> Please stick around for the bloopers that are after this and let us know if you'd like to see a uh, scenario five. We're thinking of doing at least one more because scenario five has a boss. Thank you so much and I'll catch you at the next stop. Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin. Barrett. Oh my god. Monica! <laughs> we were gonna point. <laughs> I, I don't know the order. Otherwise, what how do we do? do, do, do. Okay. Do 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 do, do. got okay. it. Okay. Also, I'm just gonna go on a like, go on record right now, I will not be matching Baron's energy. Oh my gosh. Just can't No happen. one, no, no one, no, don't forget to have your XP. Really? Are you, are you done yet? Are you wow. Done? <laughs> 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 the loudest thing 
ever on camera. Oil, <laughs> oil, <laughs> oil my chairs. Oil my chairs. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Wrecked. Not in my vocabulary. Since that stone golem is wrecked. Ready for this. Since the stone golem has peacefully passed away. <laughs> I think it was perfect. I dropped a loot token, and then I dropped my favorites as well. <laughs> no, everything was great. Just, just you did it. I mean, it's totally fine. It was just like, Colin, you're annoying me. <laughs> Do you want me to read it? No, no that's my, fine. my favorite is that she stands there, and you dropped a loot token. And I dropped my loot token. <laughs> and your favorite token. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Boom Boom's going to be going next, and we've got Explode and the big one. Now, before we do anything, we're going to have to go ahead and oh, I'll redo that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to the plumbers. I love this. Because I dropped my token. Why don't you start over? Start yep, over. Start, 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 start over. Make it easier for me, if you're okay with that. Okay. You really only said about five words. Yeah. Well, I said a lot of words. A lot of words. I know, but I'm trying to cut that to get it in the right spot. 